Sup world, welcome back to Radical Investors where we talk about stocks, crypto, and all the ways how to get the money. I'm Wasu. I'm Hamed. And today we're reviewing Trade Trade's appearance on CNBC. Let's go. Trey Collins and Mike, Matt Kors, excuse me. Guys, great to have you with us. Welcome. Hey, I appreciate that, Thank Melissa. Thank you very much. It's an uh, honor Trey to be and here. Matt, are, are you, first of all, Matt, are you guys friends? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Have you guys done this before, Trey, together? In interview together, no, no, this is the first time, but me and Matt have been good buddies for a while. We chat on the phone a couple times a week for sure. I, I can <laughs> tell by your Twitter feed, you guys like reference each other and stuff that there's real camaraderie here in this trade. Uh, Matt, I'll kick it off with you. Uh, what's the number one reason at this point, at 60 plus bucks a share, AMC will go higher? Oh, the number one reason. So there's definitely a myriad of reasons, but I think for me, it's, um, it's definitely much more of the fact that I would say the stock chart, the stock itself, its price is the scoreboard and it's the power of the psychological wildfire that this social and cultural movement has taken place. And we're just seeing the impact of that in AMC's ticker. Trey, same question to you. And I'm sure that you probably echo some of what Matt had said, but in terms of other reasons behind this sort of uh, cultural force that's behind this stock, what is the reason why AMC will go higher in your view? I think it's going to go higher because you're looking at a new breed in the stock market. You're looking at apes. You, you, we're looking at, you know, old traditional investing styles and methods. And that's really not what you're watching taking place here. It's a kind of a revolution, you know, you could say in, in terms of what's going on for new trading. It's a new opportunity to make money. Uh, you can see the you know story on the chart. The chart is bullish. It's it's consolidating in that $55, 60 range. That shows strength. It shows that people are holding the stock, anticipating that it's going to go higher. And that's why I think it's going to go higher ultimately. Let's be clear, because uh, Trey and I got a chance to chat on the phone yesterday a little bit, Matt. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to connect. Um, but but we we're making the point that it's not necessarily the fundamentals. I mean, if you want a fundamental analysis of this stock, you go to traditional Wall Street research. You can pull all that up as much as you want, get the research report that'll say a penny, a share, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but d does fundamentals ever factor? I mean, in terms of, you know, knowing that AMC has raised cash, knowing that its debt has been upgraded by S&P, knowing that it's going to buy a chain of theaters in California, does that come into play at all in your narrative for the stock or no, that is a sideshow? Um, very, very minimally, much more closer to it being a sideshow. And the reason I'm saying that is like, I don't want to completely ignore it because I know that's the common argument against it. It's fundamental analysis. So in my opinion, the fact that from the start of 2021 until this very moment that we're talking right now, the fundamental trajectory trajectory of AMC has improved. So I think that's almost weakening the argument against it. But I just want to reiterate the fact that this is not a fundamental long-term investment right now. This is much more of a swing trade, much more of a momentum trade. It is just a trade. Uh, the discussion for a fundamental investment would take place after this short squeeze narrative fully plays out. So can you guys walk me through, and Trey, I'll direct this to you. Can you walk me through what what are the factors in place for this, what you guys call the mother of all short squeezes to, to take place? Well, there's three main things that both me and Matt, you know, like to talk about, you know, mm -hmm. essentially. And it's it's the short interest, the gamma squeeze and FOMO buying, essentially the fear of missing out. Right. So you've got a pretty decent amount of short interest. And these are these shares have been held for a very long time. In fact, 47 days is the average amount of time that any loan has been held on the stock, which means that the average short position is held at ten dollars. They're down substantially, right? So there are some more shorts that can cover positions and run this up. Gamma squeezing, which is call options running from out the money to in the money, can cause the squeeze up effect as well because market makers have to buy the underlying stock from the market and that can drive price up. And then it's a momentum trade, right? You're going to bring in some day traders, some swing traders, some people who are looking at the stock and thinking this is the hottest security in the market right now. I want to be a part of this. I want to make money on it. And those three factors drive into the momentum that has been what you've watched happen the last month. Matt, what triggers the squeeze eventually? What's it going to look like? What's going to look like? I mean, I think it's just going to be a very volatile, violent move to the upside. And like, just to give some, like, I guess, more of the quantitative numbers to it, mm -hmm. what Trey just said, the people who have been betting on this, on average, have had those shares loaned out for 47 days, which means they got in, on average, around the $10 mark, which means they're down 500%. And to put a number on that, that's over $2 billion. I get it. We're dumb money. We don't know what we're doing, but then why are they the ones down 2 billion? And we're the ones that are, P&Ls are like 
insanely, insanely high. So right there, there's just so much pressure against these shorts. Uh, I just did a quick rundown on the out of the money options expiring tomorrow for quadruple witching. We're talking 37 million shares. And then the unknown factor of just FOMO buying people, th this story is resonating with people on a deeply human level. And I think that means we're gonna see more and more FOMO buying because why not stick it to Wall Street when you have the opportunity? How much, uh, Trey, for you, is it the stick it to Wall Street mentality that's driving your personal position in the stock? I got to be honest with you, Melissa. This is uh, this is something personal to me. So I come from a place where I, I wasn't very well off, right? I, I did not have a lot of money. In fact, there was a summer which I lived in the you know the back of my car, you know, serving and bartending at Buffalo Wild Wings, trying to make ends meet. And I think you get this this the peak, right? The peak of the iceberg, which essentially is built. The, the stock market's built around these suits and ties, the hedge funds, the big firms, the one percent, so that they can continue to make money off the expense of a systemic problem that takes money from retail investors. I got an AMC as a swing trade back in January, and after watching what you know unfolded with you know Robinhood and some of the halting on trading, so that you could only sell your security, I was mad. I was just flat out angry, and I dug into a lot of the research, due diligence, number crunching, and, and just learned, educated myself to come to see, hey, this is something that I think people are passionate about. This is a stock that I think has some more upside, and I think can send a message to these big guys on Wall Street to show, hey, the retail investor, you know, we're not that stupid. We know how to make money, and we want to send a message to the short sellers out there saying, you should stop betting against us. Simple as that. There are a lot of issues that are raised on the Reddit boards and the chat boards, Matt, in terms of what is wrong with Wall Street and, and how things should be. What is your number one gripe what do you what's the number one problem in your view that needs to be addressed by the sec or regulators or whomever from more of a higher level view i think it's just it's kind of insane that we've gotten to this situation that two 20 year olds are coming on the show asking for more transparency in stock market plumbing the amount of unknowns the delay in getting data reports all of it's ridiculous and right now we're, we just want more transparency i think from that higher general level it's just the field is clearly tilted. We're not engaging in a fair game across the board. There's just different rules for different players. And we're just asking for a fair shot across the board. Trey, same question to you. I would speak on the exact same thing. You know, this is something I find very fascinating. It's the amount of retail investors that have gotten into the stock market in the last 12 months, right? Pre-COVID and pandemic, right? There was about 20% of actual transactions on the market, retail investors. Now it's 35%. Now, an even more mind-boggling number is off-exchange transactions, the transparency that Matt was talking about. It's about 50% of actual transactions that take place in dark pools and off-exchange trading. I mean, just the name dark pools, doesn't that, <laughs> it, does, it sounds like something that you shouldn't even trust, and, and it's not transparent, right? You've got that, you've got the T2 settlement system, you've got big brokers saying, but look at this, you're saving money on transactions, when in reality, it's really not, it's pennies compared to the millions of dollars that is you know, coming from the expense of the retail investor. Matt, I want to get back to the idea that you guys view this as a you know, swing trade, momentum trade. It's a trade. And yet on the Reddit boards, it's diamond hands. And so are you trading around a position, a core position in AMC, or, or how are you managing that position? So for me personally, I've been just continually building on my shares, and then I'll kind of move in and out of different options. And that's just exclusively because they... Um, expire at whatever date. So for example, for me personally, I have a bunch of options that expire tomorrow. Depending on what's going on, I might roll some, I might exercise some, but overall I have that core share position that all I do is add to. Same question to you, Trey, and I'll add to this, what other stocks are you trading besides AMC? Because I'm guessing that you're probably trading lots. So my kind of strategy, this is just my strategy, right? Is that I purchase about 80% of my AMC position in stock and the other 20% in options. And I'll roll the options the same exact way that Matt will, you know, it, so that I can capitalize on the gains and not have to fight theta so much. And you can use those gains to buy more stock, buy more options. And I continue to drive that in. And that's kind of what I've been doing since January 26th or 27th. That's about the first day that I, I bought AMC stock. But to be absolutely transparent with you i've got long-term positions that i don't look at but other than that amc is what i've been focused on because i've got that much conviction in the trade i, I have since january just crunching these numbers doing the research i didn't think at five dollars was as high as it would go i don't think a penny is where it's going to go either okay we're going to have a number of regulators ex-regulators ex-sec folks on this show tonight so matt just quickly what's your number one question that you'd like answered on behalf of what you call the the ape community I would like a lot more insight on this the 
concept of what we're seeing if they're successfully segmenting all of retail traders, which I think is damaging to the market as a whole. This entire concept of payment for order flow kind of hurting all retail traders. I don't see how that leads to a healthy Wall Street experience. Trey, how about you? The audio cut out. Would you mind saying that again? The number one question that you would have that you'd like answered tonight, we're, we're going to have a lot of sort of ex-regulator, mm. ex-SEC type guests. I'd like to see what sort of systemic changes we can make. I think there's a huge opportunity to learn from the last six months of experience that's taken place in, in the stock market, specifically around heavily shorted stocks, momentum trades like AMC and, and GameStop. How do we address failure to deliver? How do we address hard to borrow securities getting naked short sell? How do we how do we address astronomical you know, margin debt? What are the things that we need to do to fix the, you know, the high frequency trading? There's a lot of big things that have led to this pivotal moment that we're watching unfold in front of everybody's eyes right now. Now. That's what I'd like to know. All right, Trey and Matt, we'd love to have you back on. Great to speak with you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Melissa. Thank Trey you. Collins and Matt Cole.